Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trevor from the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And after last week's very, very expensive card reviews we've done on the way of the Witcher expansion, it's high time that we get back into the deck guides. And today is not going to be any different. We're going to be talking about the Tastes Like Poison deck. And unlike what you're thinking, it's not going to be a Nilf Guardian deck, it is going to be a Syndicate deck. Because of course the new Salamander cards focused a lot on poisoning and self-poisoning particularly. And that's what we're going to talk about today and see how we can benefit from those new mechanics the most. So, Tastes Like Poison. The deck that we're gonna use today is based on the Of The Books Syndicate ability. So, if you haven't used that before, it gives you three charges of an order ability that gives you two coins each time. But, more importantly, your passive ability is that your tribute costs one coin less. So, that's gonna come back into a lot of these cards. And uh, we'll go through them from the bottom to the top, just to have a bit of a view on those. So... I've added a few spenders because while I was testing this deck out, it was usually the point where I uh, had a lot of coins left by the end of this, which is why I included uh, Street Urchins and of course also the Coerced Blacksmith because that allows you to spread out your spendage a bit more than just on that single Street Urchins card. Um, but again, 3 profit and if for one coin you can boost the Street Urchins by one each time. Then of course we get into the poison, there's a lot of poison cards in this deck, one of which is the Fistech Trafficker, which allows you to also poison your own units, which is going to come in uh, very handy in a minute. Then the Mutants Maker, this is a Devotion deck, so there's only Syndicate cards in this deck, which allows the Mutants Maker to be just 4 power and giving you 3 coins guaranteed, so 7 points out of uh, 4 provisions, which is just very very strong. Double Fist deck, 4 profit and a poison, um, which could also go onto your own units if you ever need to, but of course in this deck we're going to be focusing on putting that poison on the other side if we can. Same with the Mutated Hounds, um, also gives you a poison if you want to, if you play those on the range row you get a poison, but if you don't have a good target for a poison because all of your opponent's uh, units are veiled or just very low power, you could also go for bleeding if you play it on the melee row. And the Salamander Mage, a very interesting new card for Tribute 4 and in our case Tribute 3. You damage 3 adjacent enemy units by 2, which could give you a bit of um, counter, a bit of a counter against Swarm decks, because this is going to be the, yeah, I think the weakest point is this deck. Against Swarms, you're not really that powerful because you're uh, just focusing on those high value targets. But then the crux of this deck, basically, these abominations are very, very cool cards. So for Tribute 1, you poison yourself, which doesn't seem all that useful until you start looking at its passive ability, where whenever this unit is poisoned, he boosts himself by two, or it, I should say, because it's an abomination. Um, and at Adrenaline Force, if you only have four cards left in your hand at the end of your turn, it also purifies itself. So you can keep applying that poison and boosting it by two each time. Uh, and the tribute is also free when this deck because of the books it reduces that tribute from 1 to 0. So very very strong opener, very very strong card to just use over the course of a round because it, you can keep growing it, especially if it's veiled and we have a few ways of veiling that unit as well. You can just poison it and it will boost itself by 2 without any deficit because it's of course not going to get poisoned after that. Then. To synchronize with that we have stolen mutagens, there's three options for this special card, you can either damage an enemy unit by four, poison one of your own units and give get five coins, and boost an allied unit by four and give it veil. So either you can protect an abomination from further poisons with the veil, or poison one that you just have unpoisoned at the moment because of the purify that you can get at adrenaline 4 and you gain five coins on top of that but even on top of that if you control at least three salamander units you also get another three coins so this could be a full purse in one go giving you uh, eight coins and even with one of the cards that we're going to talk about in a minute even more uh, on top of that if you want to payday is included just to have a five damage hit um, which is very handy against Quartel movement decks to get rid of a Cat School Witcher. And then we get to the more interesting cards, the gold cards. So let's start with Gallic Blindheim. Gives you two coins F when you play him and then F 
every turn you can poison an allied unit of your choice and boost that unit by two. If you do this on an abomination, you will poison it, boost it by two, and then boost it by two again because of the abomination's passive ability. So basically, I think this is the only card that could give you four points for every coin you spend. And because of that, it's very powerful. It does have a cooldown because of it. So you can only use this fee ability once per turn. Then you also have his brother, Roland Blindheim. Uh, who synchronizes very well with his brother because whenever a unit is poisoned you gain two coins and if you only have five cards left it only triggers on your own units so if you poison your own units which could very well give you a full person one go with certain cards. Kalkstein is also included here just to have a purify option. Um, you can use this for a lot of things uh, mainly to purify your, either your own units if you want to apply poison again um, getting rid of Veiled units from your opponent and even getting rid of, of course, Defender statuses. So Kalkstein is very, very useful, especially in this deck. Now we have another Salamandra engine with the Dire Mutated Hound, giving you a 4 base power for 8 provisions, which isn't that good, but he also has uh, 2 armor and at the end of your turn, if it still has armor, it will boost itself by 2. And you can reapply 1 point of armor for 4 coins, which you could get back after 2 turns. So, it is a very, very handy engine card, but could be targeted rather quickly as well. But still, it is a Salamander unit, counts for a lot of the other cards, so very useful indeed. And then, the Salamandra Hideout. So the location for Syndicate, that has been added in the Way of the Witcher expansion. You can spawn, well... I almost always use the Abomination with this card because one, it's a very strong card, you get seven points from that immediately. And two, it gives you a poison on one of your own units, which uh, immediately gives you the option next turn to use the order ability, which moves a poison from an allied unit to another unit of your choice. If um, you combine that with a poison card from your hand, you can immediately destroy any card of your opponent in one go. Uh, because you just apply poison twice in the same turn. And now we get to the very big hitters. There's a few of them in this deck. Um, mainly, of course, Sal the Salamander itself. I'm just going to try and highlight it here. Which gives you one profit, so one coin. But it increases the profit of this card by one for every Salamander unit in uh, on your field right now. So... This card can easily give you enough coins of its own accord to trigger that attribute ability, which will poison every single unit on the battlefield if you trigger it. Which means that if you have Roland Blyheim active, you will get, um, in most cases, a full burst again. So you will rise to 9 points even after the Salamander ability has hit. Um, and on top of that, if you don't have the coins, you also just get a single poison out of this. But as I said, with the amount of Salamandra units in this deck, you actually have plenty of ways to get enough coins for the Salamander itself. The benefit of all the books, by the way, is also that a lot of the tribute abilities in this deck are based on their profit, which, uh, since the tribute is lowered, gives you an extra coin every time you use a tribute ability. Because, for example, Azar Javad here gives you two uh, scarabs if you use his tribute ability, that both have the defender status, but the tribute will only cost two while he gives you three coins, so you left, you're left with one extra coin. And also gives you three Salamandra units, very important for some of the other cards like the Salamander and the Stolen Mutagens. On top of that, of course, we're looking at tribute abilities now. Uh, Savola giving you the Frightener for 8 coins, of which he actually provides 2 himself. So just an easy 70 points, uh, 17 points in uh, just a single card. One cuter, uh, the Vivaldi Bank, giving you 3 coins and then allowing you to look at the top cards from your deck depending on your coin count and selecting one and playing that based off of your coin count. Then, a very, very important card in this deck is still Philippa Eilhart. On deploy, spend a number of coins and seize an enemy unit with, uh, well, equal of that amount of coins you uh, actually spend on it. So, if you have four coins, you can get a four-point unit, giving you ten points when one go. Uh, very, very powerful to get, again, those Cat School Witchers. Um, and even if you're very lucky, a Colgrim, if your opponent, um, your Nilfgaardian opponent hasn't managed to make the difference between the decks too high, 
Um, so very, very useful counter against a lot of tactics, which is why it was included in this deck. And then the two strongest cards, Fallen Rayla, Tree Prophet, and a Tribute that gives her Veil. But if you play here when you have four cards in your hand and she's the fourth card, you immediately trigger that Tribute ability and boost herself by that cost that you've spent on the Tribute. And after that, she will boost herself every time you pay a Tribute ability. So very strong in combination with Zavola, Alza Javed, and of course the Salamander, which all have very high Tribute uh, costs. And of course, Jacques at the very end as well, a four tribute tree in this deck, giving you an extra coin again and giving you those two fire sworn, uh, well, zealots now. But if you have him at the very end, since this is, a, this is a devotion deck, you get the flaming rose footman instead. So that gives you 12 points in one go. Actually, even 13 because of, of the books, you get an extra coin that you can immediately spend on Jacques himself. So that's the deck. We also use Crystal Skull because that gives us another veil. So you can put that on the Abomination and just benefit from it that way. So that's the deck. Um, it's a very, very cool deck, a very strong deck as well, as you'll hopefully see in the example match that we're going to go into right now. Okay, and this should be a perfect combination. So we're facing monsters. Um, blood sense. You get a thunderbolt. You get okay. A that is going to be interesting. You don't see a lot of that on the ladder these days, but uh, okay. So this is our first hand. We are looking at quite a nice collection of cards. I usually get rid of the Salamander Mage, especially um, against monsters, but I only need one Abomination. Either Stolen Mutagens could be useful, but we could get something even more juicy because uh, we do start, so we do get Veil. So let's just try another one. Okay, so we get another poison. Um, since we are starting, what I usually try to do is go with Salamandra Abomination. Play that, poison it immediately, giving us a nice 7 points to start with. We need to be careful that we don't get Predatory Dived, so we don't boost it with the Veil just yet. Because, of course, we don't want to do that. Because if it gets hit with the Predatory Dive, we lose 11 points instead of just the 7 right now. And we get a Drowner at the start, but that took a long time for them to decide on that. Uh, that's a 5-point Abomination now. They didn't destroy it. Which gives me the... Well, the feeling that they don't have a way of destroying it, so... Let's just veil it now. Because we can benefit from it later. And the abominations are also very useful in that they allow you to get value out of poisons that you can't use anymore properly. So for example, right now we have three poisons in our hand, which is technically one uh, too many, because we can't use that third one to kill something. But of course we could use that on one of our own units, and in this case the abomination would get another two points from that. So giving you more value for your poison overall. And then we get the Apiarian Phantom. I could be an asshole and grab that. Um, but right now, I don't think we need to. It's just going to give us give them one point per turn. We can grab something more useful. Um, so let's use... There's not really anything useful to poison right now. So let's just um, use the Vivaldi bank and see what we can get. Aha! So, yeah, you know what? It's, it's per a perfect time to show that combo. So th let's grab Gallard um, and play him right next to the Hound and then use that one coin. So we only use one coin and you'll see the Salamander Abomination go up twice. So that was four points for one coin and the poison didn't hit because of the veil. So that gives us a very, very big unit um, going up. We know Monsters generally doesn't really have many tall removal options, aside from maybe Imlerit's Wrath or um, yeah, the Heat Wave if they, are, they use the Heat Wave. But then again, we get rid of that Heat Wave early on. And we still have plenty of other cards that we can use in a minute. And because of the proactiveness of Poison, you want to win that first round, so you can have as many big targets as you can by the end of the uh, the last round. So if you have that final say with poison, it's always the best thing to go for. Um, a lot of veiled units. 
which is uh, pretty interesting. Um, I don't really want to waste the... Hmm. Because Blood Sand, of course, is going to give us bleeding. If we can use Kalkstein at that point, we might be able to mitigate some of the damage. But on the other hand, is that going to do that much? Probably not. I could use Philippa, but then again, <laughs> it is such a dickhead move. Um, you know what? Let's just play Kalkstein. Um, let's see if he survives. There's not really another good option right now. And then we can get four more points from uh, Gallard right over there. Okay. So we basically have a six-point engine on the field right now. So we get one, uh, four points from Gallard on the Abomination. And then we get two points from the Dire Mutated Hound. So very, very tall units. And there we go, the expected pass. Um, do I want to get rid of something? I could start building up my coin count now. Uh, but it's not really something I want to do now. Because the cards aren't really there for it either. We could still do that in the next round. So if we get like, for example, the street urchins. And maybe even one of the fist decks. We could just build up to 8 coins, for example. Which would be perfect. Yeah, so that's the mutants maker. That's actually perfect. And then the street urchins. But I think I have one coin left. So probably combine it with the fist deck would be better. Um, so let's get rid of the street urchins for now. That is also pretty good, but that's three, three coins on my end. Uh, let's get rid of the trafficker as well. I could use the fist deck if I want to, yeah. Okay. That's actually a pretty good hand. So let's play the mutants maker first, giving us three coins. Um, putting us up to four, and then with the fist deck, I'm gonna go up to eight, giving us four coins in the final round, which gives us basically a four point advantage. And also allows us to use Philippa, for example, immediately. So the Brux is gonna go down. I think they probably know what's coming. Uh, I'm just gonna use the fist deck to get those four extra coins. And just a little bit of thinning, because even though fist deck is a poison, um, card, it is only four provisions, so that is gone out of my hand now as well. I have eight coins, and I'm guessing they're overplaying here. Because Gale, that wouldn't have been necessary at all. Because they even have another card if they want to go over me. The, but, I mean, I'm ahead, so I'm gonna just pass. And we got Sirinova. Okay, fair enough. I could even grab that immediately if I wanted to. It is Veiled, it has Shields, that would actually fit very, very well in what I'm trying to do here. Huh. Hmm. So, one of the most important things to keep in mind here. So I have the Salamander and I have Fallen Rayla. I also have two poisons and practically basic, uh, basically three poisons here. Against certain opponents that don't have a lot of purifies, it's usually better to poison each separate unit and then use Salamander to destroy three units in one go in this case. Um, but I do want to keep a spender in my hand. So I think I'm going to keep everything as is. I could get rid of the Abomination. And that's another Street Urchins. So I'm going to get rid of it. Ah, oh, okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. So that starts with a Frightener. I'm gonna grab the Siri. I have too many coins in my hand right now. Um, okay. So I can use of the books twice to go into eight coins. I'm getting teased a bit here. And then use Philippa Eilhart to grab the Siri. So that gives me an extra veiled unit that I can just spawn poisons on top of that won't have any sort of effect. Um, and it just gave me that 19 point play in one go. Because they lost 8 points, we gained 11, so very, very nice indeed. Okay, I think I'm just going to play the Salamandra hideout. That's going to give us another abomination. And again, as we said, abominations are very good to just have in play. Because you can poison them for extra points and just have a very tall unit on the field. So if you're counting with me, that means we have uh, three, uh, three, I, I did say four for some reason, but three separate poison options that we can trigger with Salamander in one go. 
Um, the best play here to end it off with is probably going to be Rayla, then Salamander, and then uh, Savola to end it off with. Or maybe even just Rayla and just keep the Blacksmith at the very end to spend any remaining coins we still have. But we get a bit of poison, uh, poison, bleeding. I, I'm the poison man right now. Bleeding. Bleeding on Philippa, that is fine. I think next up should be Roland. Um, we will get extra coins from Roland one more time. We're only at three Salam uh, two Salamandra units yet, so I need to be careful. Yeah, so that's the Fuka. And I'm guessing I'll probably just... The Bruxa seems to be the highest at the moment. The, um, the Frightener is going to have immunity, so I won't be able to apply poison to that. But I'm going to have to... I don't want to play the Blacksmith right now, because the Blacksmith needs to be the card that I still have at the very end, so I can spend my remaining coins. But I would like three Salamandra units on the field, so I'm going to use the, um, the Mutated Hounds to poison the Bruxa. And that gives us two coins from um, Roland. I'm guessing we're gonna get um, the poison lady really soon, the, the bleeding lady really soon. I kind of forgot her name there for a second. Uh, that's also not a problem. We can kill that in one go if you want to. But now we have, hmm. I could go really high right now with my coin count if I wanted to. I think. I'm gonna veil. I'm gonna veil. Uh, I'm gonna get purifies in a minute. So I'm gonna veil one of my own units. So let's just use the green mutagen. So boost by four and add veil. And I'm gonna put that on the um, the dire hounds. Uh, they're not the dire hounds, just the mutated hounds. So that's another veil on my side of the field. So they're going with Thrive. Which is not that much of a problem for us, because we can just keep poisoning. So let's play another Mutated Hounds on the Eskel in the front. So they're either going to have to consume that to get the most out of it. Or... Yeah, there is no, no real other option. If they want to, don't want to lose those points, they're going to have to consume that Eskel. And then, of course, they lose that generating point total. Okay, so there's the bleeding. Bleeding's coming in, so we're getting... Um, what's her name again? Or Orlanda? Oriana, that was it. <laughs> God damn it, so there she is. So that gives us our final target for the... That was stupid, because of course, they're veiled. Um, so that's just going to keep going. I don't really care about that just yet. So let's put Fallen Rayla in there. Again, another veiled unit. So we don't really care about any of that. There we go. That gives us six coins. I'm hesitating whether I should use the blacksmith first so I can get rid of my excess coins. I don't think it's going to be necessary. So we get the queen of the night. That's going to probably be a purify. Oh no. Ooh, I would have gone for the purify there. Because they're going to lose those coins cards otherwise okay i'm gonna take the risk i'm gonna use the blacksmith to get rid of my excess coins um so let's just use the coerced blacksmith that gives us an extra coin and then i'm gonna boost roland a little bit um how much do i get right now so we have one two three four five six coins i'm gonna get so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be tempted to just keep that going. So six coins, that should be enough. But I only need eight. So let's just put that on the hounds as well. There we go. So that's why we're counting coins. So we're gonna get six from the salamander. Well, provided that everybody stays alive here, <laughs> which could be still problematic. But there we go. So that's a twelve point Oriana. Yeah, I think we're good here, right? So let's count again. So one, two, three, four, five salamandra units. We get one extra from the salamander, so that's six. On top of the two that we already have in the bag, 
We can just play the salamander. Pay the tribute. There we go. We get the menu. And that provides poison. We kill two units in one go there. And we're going to trigger the frightening off to this. Which is not that much of a problem. And then we can use the, um, the laboratory to kill Oriana. And we get a frightener in return, which is not ideal. But regardless, I should probably just uh, do this once or twice. There we go. Yeah, let's just, let's just end it. Can we please end it? There we go. Because we still have Savola. So I think we're golden here. So I think I spent one coin too many, but we can use off the books to offset that. And as you can see, the Abomination also rose to 10 now because of the extra poison from the Salamander. And I think they're trying to figure out what happened. They must have not played this deck before, because uh, that was really fun. There were a lot of points on the board, and we could just take them out in one go with uh, the Salamander. And then we get one more Veiled unit, but uh, it's not going to matter. So let's just use off the books one more time, so we can get the Savola out there. And get ourselves another 17 points. And we get one more coin that we can use on whatever we want. So there we go. 65, 86. A very nice win for the Tastes Like Poison deck. So one more look at the deck itself. There's some really strong endgame here with uh, playing Fallen Rayla first. I don't know if you noticed, but Rayla actually ended up at, I think it was over 20 points. Because um, we went to 5. Then to 7 with our first ability, we then spent 8 coins with Salamander, so that put us up to 15. And then we spent another 8 on Savala, so that was 23. So Fallen Rayla on her own was 23 points. And then of course all the poison that was going around, that is always a very strong endgame. You could also use Jack at the end to spend your final coins, but it's also very important that you keep in mind to have a spender at the very end to spend those remaining coins. Especially if you have Roland on the field, you just get back to 9 coins immediately after using the salamander so it's very important that you can spend those coins so you don't have them hanging because i have had games before where i didn't have a spender and i had all my of the books abilities still left and nine coins in my bag that i couldn't spend so that was 15 points that i just lost other than that removal wise of course you have poison you can use you have the payday card and even stolen mutagens if you have enough uh, with four damage you can use that as well and then of course philippa to take uh, any of those engine cards that you want to take or just Siri Nova if you want to grab it uh, as I just did because that was another field unit that just benefited us really well um, and yeah one a deck that really benefits also from having Kalk's team in certain situations because that's another way to remove uh, something like a defender um, without needing to use uh, Philippa or something else to get rid of that defender so very strong deck very versatile deck as well and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide because that's going to do it for today. Let me know what you think of the Tastes Like Poison Syndicate deck that we uh, just demoed today. Um, if you have any more tips to improve it even further, let me know. Uh, there might be some small adjustments that you could make to this deck. But I feel like it's pretty well optimized so far. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did. And otherwise, see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye.